November 8th, Shane and I made it to the stand. I'm gonna see some big old bucks today, I think. Well, that's the action we were looking for. <laughs> that's one of the top things I've ever seen in the near wood. Oh, dude, you can't make that up. Couldn't have written it any better. That is, that's unbelievable. Welcome back to another episode of Midwest Whitetail. We appreciate you taking the time to join us for another Monday show. And as you saw on the front end there, luckily the team's big buck action has continued through the rut. Caleb's had some awesome hunts. I've had some good encounters. Gavin has been putting work in on the public land. And Mike and Bella actually went on her first bow hunt ever just yesterday. So the Midwest Whitetail Daily Channel is a great spot if you're looking to tap into what the team is trying to focus on day by day. And as we go into the back half of the month with strategy shifting, Good spot to check out if it'll apply to any of your hunting. Midwest Whites of Regional, we've been having some awesome stories come to a close there. You know, I know Collins Marine on the Midwest Whites of Heartland show had an awesome hunt. Nolan Redeker has been grinding it out in Kansas, all the guys on the East show. And as we go into the back half of the month, we're really hoping to finish out strong. But we're gonna take a step back here on this week's episode. Drake Lamb, Justin Carnes. Those are two of my closest friends, and this one is a very, very cool story that really is a full circle moment, for lack of a better term. Those guys met internship all the way back in 2017 with Mr. Bill Winky himself, all the way up to today where they started their own company together and had an incredible deer hunting season. So one thing that comes to mind with Drake and Justin specifically is just the tenacity that they had to put themselves in a great position each and every fall. And the 23 season was certainly no different. You know, one thing that I hope is going to shine through is they had some really high highs, they had some lows, and at the end of it all, they had each other's back. And as bow hunters, we know that it's a roller coaster ride. So let's join Drake and Justin on that ride. It's one that ends in a very high note. Couldn't be happier for you guys. And it's a giant eight pointer. So. Good luck out there if you still got a tag to fill. And thanks again so much for taking the time to watch. Hey guys, welcome back to Midwest Whitetail. As you guys have seen, the, the team has had some awesome success here over the last couple weeks. As Josh alluded myself, I tagged out on the 4th of November. So that leads me to why I'm here today. Uh, just doing a little observation sit on this farm. Easy spot to get into. I can see for, you know, see for a mile in each direction, but got some bucks in here that uh, we've been getting on camera and just trying to get some buddies on here in the next week or two. But uh, I've had an awesome, awesome sit this morning. I got in first light, had a uh, big, nice four or five year old deer uh, bedded down out here in the field, locked down with the doe, pushing off all kinds of other bucks. So 
I think I've seen maybe 10 bucks so far today. Um, basically every deer that we've got on camera. So been a great scouting mission. So if we want to rewind this and basically go back to where my story began this summer, um, we had a couple deer that we were looking back for uh, going into this summer. One being a deer we call Swoops, a deer that I had tons of trail camera pictures of. Picked him up uh, there in January, found his shed, basically kind of put together his core on that farm. That was the first year that I that I'd had permission on that farm, so we were definitely looking back for him, and we we started getting pictures of him. I think uh, there in late July or August, down in kind of the core. So he was going to be one of the targets on my list, and then uh, a buck we call the flyer buck. He showed up on the 50th, so those were going to be my two targets going into the 23 season. You know, another big thing that happened this past summer is uh, Justin and I, and Justin and I have been basically best friends since our intern year, clear back in, I think, 2016, 2017. <laughs> back when we were just young pups, didn't really know how to run camera or, or, or edit it or anything. Um, we just, we basically both shared the passion for just crazy deer nut guys. And so, um, you know, me and him, having flexible schedules over the last couple of years have just basically developed this this sweet friendship that not many other guys can probably say they can talk to deer 24 7 to somebody with but justin's one of those dudes so um you know going clear back to 2017 we just kind of hit it off and we've been best friends ever since and so along with being deer nuts we love manipulating the habitat making the habitat better for these deer anything that goes along with you know building the story building food plots, habitat, um, just to make it better. Anything along those lines with habitat management, Justin and I are just ate up with. So we were fortunate enough to pair up with our buddy Skip Sly and form a habitat management business. We're calling Vitality Visions. And so if you guys don't know, Skip is, is the habitat guy. Um, he's done this stuff for over 20 years just the habitat guru guy so i told justin man if we want to do this skippy is our guy skippy's the guy that i want to learn from take everything in that we can from him so um this past summer i started going down there and just soaking up as much as i could from skip and so we've teamed up and come up with this business vitality visions where we're going to go in and do habitat management we did a bunch of tsi work for some guys this summer um just you know improving improving the habitat for the deer not only the deer the pheasants the quail turkeys obviously we love it so um it's not about killing these deer it's about making making the habitat and just you know allowing those deer the best lives that they you know that they can possibly have so along with teaming up with skip um that basically opened a whole new door um, as far as properties being able to hunt out there as much as we could during the summer planting CRP with stands, TSI work, camera work, putting blinds up, uh, you name it, we've uh, we've done it. So, you know, we can't thank Skip enough for the opportunity, but being able to pair up with a couple dudes that uh, I can call good buddies and uh, you know have a business and be successful is is very awesome and we're definitely looking forward to what we can turn this thing into so this spot sets up really really well what we've got is the house is located just off to the southeast here and then we've got really good bedding to the west and even up to the north so we can slip right in with a little bit of terrain we're going to have corn and some plot screen over here depending on how that plot screen finishes out this year but the access is essentially bulletproof anything with essentially a north cleared almost a southwest wind we'll be able to hunt these deer i let this rye seed out this year so what we're gonna do is burn it off and then if we need to spray some of it off to make our brassicas a little bit plot a little bigger we will but Otherwise we'll have rye coming right up, right here. So we're gonna get hot here. <laughs> uh, Justin and I have been working all morning on his farm. So we're basically in here today, just gonna burn this plot and seed it. We've got some rain coming here this afternoon. Um, like I said, it's August 1, so it's time to get these, these fall plots in the ground. So we're gonna get in here and get her planted. Hopefully we'll be doing some velvet filming here this week.
So as the 2023 season began, Justin and I started our season out at Skips. We had a couple deer out there that we were gonna target on the west side of the farm. Big mature deer, a couple of big eight pointers. There was one out there that was real wide. Um, six-year-old deer that we were gonna try and get his, his uh, younger sister Jenna on, who we've taken for the past, oh, I don't know, five or six years and she's killed she's killed a couple really really good deer with a uh, double flyers on Justin's home farm and then uh, last year she killed a really good deer on public land so she's just a big buck killer so all of this basically led up to uh, the 26th of September when we took Jenna out for the first time after the big eight and uh, we had a great hunt we had great access slipping in through some awesome native cover up into the blind and when you know it the first deer out was the big eight on this one's perfect. Had an old mentor of ours, Bill Winky, that uh, used to preach access, creeks, ditches, and we've taken that and made these CRP native grass plantings just awesome. We're walking through seven, eight foot tall grass right now, right to this blind, and it's just, it's perfect. We got Jenna on the, uh, on the old muzzleloader tonight, trying to get one kicked off here for use season. Let's go get her done. So we are set up on the first hunt of the year for, for me, Justin, and Jenna have been out one other time. We're at uh, one of Skip's farms, so we've done a lot of work on this farm here this off season. So there's a couple of deer in here that we're after, a couple of big old wide eight pointers, one that's got a big uh, club on his right side, and then another couple another big uh, wide eight. So we got green beans in here that were planted late, so they're still green. We got some clover right here in front of us. It's gonna be about the coolest it's going to be for the next four or five days so looking forward to the first time of the year should be a good one She was real solid for quite a while. Drake had to make a little adjustment. Just a real slow trigger squeeze. Right on his heart, that's where you had it. Mm-hmm, hopefully. We heard the, heard the gun go off and we heard a smack. I heard a smack for certain, so. Oh. <laughs> Back to the truck, got the footage reviewed, and uh, 
it's hard to see anything with that smoke, you know? So we came out here and the three of us kind of grid searched these beans. We know he was 125 from the blind when we shot, so we kind of used the rangefinder to double that up. We've crisscrossed a couple times now, and we haven't found a speck of blood. It's real hard to do in these standing beans, but we were hoping that if we found good blood, we'd kind of follow it a bit. But basically, we think he's in this bowl within two, 300 yards of us right here. So part of it, and we're gonna give him the night and come back and get him in the morning. So the next day we struck out again, um, you know, gave it a really valiant effort. Checked all the ponds, all the draws, any little creeks, anything that we could. There was some smoke that, that went by the, that went in front of the camera and um, you just couldn't quite see right where the impact was. We knew it was maybe just a touch low, but we just didn't think it was that bad. And, so basically we were just gonna keep an eye on those cameras and hopefully that buck would show up and then maybe get, get on that buck later on during bow season or get her on it during, uh, during gun season. So as early October came and went, Justin and I made a couple hunts there for the flyer buck with no luck, had some good hunts, some good encounters, um, just no good encounters with, with the flyer buck. So I spent the basically the whole rest of the month freelancing for a couple bodies in their shows, but the 18th of October, Skip texted us Early one morning, he must have been going through Cuddy Link photos and and got and had a picture of the big eight that Jenna had hit, and we were just mind blown, man. Like, deer was alive and well, didn't have any, you know, any big signs of, of of any injuries or anything. So, that was great. I got back from a couple trips late October, and a good buddy of mine, Stephen Phillips, scuba, he drew his first Iowa tag, so he was going to come up for five days and hunt with us. And what better uh, farm to go to to spend five days in Iowa than, than Skip's down there in southern Iowa. So Justin and I thought it'd be a great opportunity for me and him to go after a couple of the target bucks down there too. October 28th, Drake and I are getting down here. Today's the first day of what we're calling our rutcation, 2023. We got a cold front that just pushed through like two days ago. We had the Magic X last night. It's cold. It's like 41 degrees. It's been like 65 all week, and we're gonna go get tucked in a tree. That's at nine. them does. Justin's going on a scout mission tonight. I'm going with scuba. Got three big deer in here we're going after. North, northwest wind, we're gonna go set up in a redneck over. It's actually a bean field that I planted. Um, they got demolished and then we went in and put some greens in there. So we're gonna see if we can make it happen. Not a bad way to kick off Iowa. Hammer of a 10 point, big bodied. Just came around checking a scrape line. This is what you come to Iowa for this time of year. The morning of October 31st, 
we snuck into a stand on the west side of the farm going after a big mature eight pointer. And it, it was actually a stand that was 200 yards south of where I killed back in 2018, I believe, a big eight pointer right, it came right up underneath the stand. And so Justin and I went in there and with high hopes of seeing this big mature eight pointer. Sure enough, the deer was the first one following a doe right, right past us about 12 yards. Justin, what we thought put a great, great shot at the time on the deer. So we got back to the cabin, reviewed the footage, and um, basically decided that the shot was a little bit back than what we had originally thought and what we would wanted. So um, we decided to back out and we, and we ended up calling a tracking dog. And I think at the 13 hour mark went in there and found some blood, but just, just no luck on finding the buck. So we were, we were just, we were sick, man. It just the, the highs and lows of bow hunting. I just, I, I hated it for Justin. So basically after uh, we brought the dog in and not finding the deer the first night, we took the morning off, went back in there, looked for the deer again, uh, the morning of the first uh, with no luck again. So later that night, we had the tracking dog come back again. He wasn't available until later that night. Brought him in again and he, he, we got back on the blood, you know, took it even further and found more blood and just didn't, just didn't end up finding the buck. So um, going into November 2nd, Justin and I and Skip and Scuba went back in. We're gonna give it one more look along the creek there where we thought, you know, maybe that, that big eight that he shot would ran up into. And so I'd kind of broken off from everybody and uh, was walking the creek looking for Justin's buck. And I'd spotted a buck on the other side of the creek. And wouldn't you have it, it was Jenna's buck. literally one of the most intense insane encounters I've ever had in the deer woods we're in here um, looking for Justin's buck I was creeping up in here and I saw one of the bucks that's on our hit list the big wide gnarly mature eight-pointer and he was on the other side so I gave him a snort wheeze and he came right up in and I bet he was five freaking yards if that doesn't tell you that uh, the ruts on here in Iowa then I don't know what does but insane you know, we we kind of put that in the back of our minds going going forward on skips, and uh, that maybe that was a deer that we we're gonna that we we're gonna try and target during bow season. So, you know, we were all down in the dumps and just upset about not finding Justin's deer after all after all the effort that we put into it. You know, it's just how it goes and it sucks. But the night of the third, we all came together and we thought, man, we got a northwest wind tomorrow morning. It's gonna be you know, perfect. And uh, so we thought, man, let's go after, let's go after Jenna's buck and just see if we can get down in there. So the night of the third, we were, we were looking on Onyx. Skippy had an old stand down there in the TSI that it's been multiple years at TSI. Just an awesome spot down the bottom. And it's a spot that we never go down in other than, you know, this time of year. So thought, heck, why not give it a shot after Jenna's buck?
you see him. He's coming. He's coming. You see him? Straight ahead. I'm almost positive it's him. I'm 95% sure it's him. Turkeys are gobbling. I saw a deer cl clear across the creek right here, and it was Jenna's buck. It was the same deer that we that I had that encounter with when we were looking for Justin's deer. Five yards, grunted him, or snort wheezed him, and then the, to be the first deer that we see this morning is is insane. Blew up the scrape like November fourth. This is uh, like it hasn't even hit me yet, but like just we just had an epic hunt, like. One of the best hunts. Oh man, that hit me. Oh. This is the one, one of the two or three bucks they were in here after this wide eight. Kind of in here on a whim of, you know, one of these bucks come cruising through here and uh, perfect access, skips T aside this timber. I mean, this is the most beautiful timber that me and Justin have ever been in. Different stages of TSI, just all kinds of brows in here, just perfect. But we slipped in from the top, came right down in. We call this the hornet's nest because we're right in, I mean, we're right in the middle of the farm and skip. You know, we preach that, hunt the edges, then dive in. This is the time to be diving in. And that's exactly where I right there. We got a giant eight on the ground, November 4th, 744. And I'm tagged out and I'm freaking jacked with him. That couldn't have been any more perfect dude it was epic like he he came across the creek just like big frame then he blew out a scrape at like 33 and we were like wait i was picking which side he was gonna go on and then he can't i don't know he's like 20 and then just yeah i mean he's dead right here 20 yards <laughs> Yeah, come on. Yeah. We'll wait for you. <laughs> All right, 
right, well, just got to the ground, and this is one of the best parts about tagging a buck, and one of the worst parts when you see him go down is you gotta wait for all your buddies, because this is definitely a team effort. Skip, for sure, he's been gracious enough to let me and Justin hunt here and come out here and work and learn from him. And that's, you know, me and Justin are just, is ingrained in this habitat management and this, everything that goes into harvesting these big deer, me and Justin are just ate up with. And we, uh, the stars aligned, we kind of aligned with Skippy with our new habitat management business. And I mean, this is just the pinnacle. This is exactly why we love doing what we do. It's what I went to school for. It's not about killing the animal, it's about growing these things, letting them have the best life that they possibly can in the best habitat that they can ever have. I mean, this this place Skip's got here is just incredible. And these entry exit routes, all the strategy that goes into these bucks, man. I mean, that's that's why we do what we do. It's not about killing these things. It's about everything else that, that goes up to it. So we're gonna go back and not go after this deer. We're gonna go get the boys. And it's gonna be a team effort on this one, so. We'll see you in a little bit. Man, Dagger. Oh. Shoot, dude. The, big the one you filmed? <laughs> no way. Saw a deer across the creek, you know, on the north side of the creek. And he went through and I was like, dang, I think that's Jenna's buck. And then he started going like northeast and then I dug dug the grunt call out, grunted, and he was he was kind of walking away and then all of a sudden, I just see the frame like coming right at us, just like straight at us. He's, 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 he's big, he's, <laughs> like he's massive. He's, he's big, dude. Yeah. Not at all. Like he's laying it. right there, uh, so we're good. <laughs> <laughs> Got the crew, got Scoob, Justin, Skippy, finally got out of bed this morning, pulled him out of there. We're gonna go look at him, he's right here. We just got back to the tree. Justin did go over here and put his coat on him before we left, just so the coyotes didn't get to him, so we should be good. He's right here, so. Oh, boys. Look at this eight, man. Holy cow. <laughs> Look at this thing. <laughs> That's a giant eight. Deer rear in here after. Skippy called it. He's like, ah, that might be a good spot in the morning. And we saw him, uh, well, the first encounter we had, what? September 26th or something? U season. And, uh, yeah, Justin's sister, we took her out and uh, she actually hit the deer somewhere. We had blood and tracked him forever. Didn't end up finding him. And then uh, Skip texted us, I don't know, what was it, two weeks after that probably. And you're, he, was, he was just mind blown, the deer showed up. And then uh, Justin shot his buck. We had, you know, kind of a fiasco with that, unfortunately. And then uh, we were in here two days ago looking for Justin's deer and I, I seen this guy on the other side of the creek and I snort wheezed at him and he kind of, he came in and blew out a scrape and just some of the coolest, one of the coolest encounters I've ever had deer hunting. Just had to watch him walk off. And so we came in this morning, we hunted this spot a couple days ago. It was down in here in this gorgeous TSI that Skip's done. And what is this, 10 years old? Some yeah. kind of different stuff. But I mean, just gorgeous in here. Tons of new regen, regrowth. Just, I mean, as good as it gets for a morning spot and down in here in the bedding and saw him across the across the creek, pulled out that grunt call and he came right in just like he did yesterday. It's just like to, to call in a deer two days in a row or you know a day apart and just nuts, but that's time of the year, November. Come and get your hands on him, boys. Oh. Look at this thing. Yeah, that's a piece. He a got definitely a lot bigger than that right there, man. We have a sheds too. He got way bigger. It's a mass on him, dude. Like, like <laughs> oh my, he's just a monster. Just a hammer of an eight. So my wish is, is that everybody gets a chance at hunting a mature deer like this. It shouldn't be just Iowa. It shouldn't be just maybe Kansas and being fewer in Kansas. There's, there's no reason 
that every state shouldn't have at least a few mature animals in, in every neighborhood for guys to chase. So Michigan, Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, down the list. There's, there's just a couple little regulation choices we have to make. And if we keep listening to the same people, making the same excuses for making things worse or not changing, it's never gonna improve. And, and I just think it, it's better for the whole herd and it's better for, for anybody chasing these mature animals across any state to be able to at least have a few of them there and get the age structure there. So it will literally benefit everybody and we can't keep going down the, the direction that we have been. So I wanna see this in every state be able to chase deer like this. Yeah, okay. I feel the scar tissue. Like this whole thing is broken right here. Feel that. It's crazy. Got him hung up. Josh was in here kind of overlooking him. And this is the deer that Jenna shot back in September. And this was the side that we shot him on. We found the entrance right here of the muzzleloader bullet. You're like an inch from the heart, man. Like literally. Literally like an inch. Perfect. I mean, you guys told me. I told her to put it on the heart. He was 120 yards and like, uh, it was perfect. I told her to put it on the heart. She's she's just, she's, she's money. She doesn't have the target panic. Like she'll slowly execute. Like I have all the confidence in the world with her behind the gun. And we were really going, I mean, after everything that happened, like we found some up. blood. Yeah, it literally looks like you got stitched up. The things that these animals can live through is, literally. it's a game of inches. So moving on from the big eight pointer, man, that was just a, it was a heck of a hunt. I'm, I'm so glad we got a, you know, have have a sweet rut camp there with Skip and and Justin and Scuba. His first time in Iowa. Fortunately, he didn't fill his tag, but he had some awesome hunts. Moving forward, um, I'm basically going to be riding the pine until late muzzleloader season that I think opens up December 17th or somewhere right in there after the second gun season here in Iowa. So going to be riding it out. We get a couple deer showing up on Justin's home farm. That's probably the only the only other tag he's going to go after. So hopefully with these cold temperatures coming next week, we can get some deer moving back in, uh, putting on them feed bags here after the rut. And hopefully, uh, hopefully the hunting's good for you guys too. But as always, we appreciate you watching Midwest Whitetail. Dude, when I saw him like coming, like after, gr after grunting at him, just came in and blew out that scrape 30 yards. Like it just, it doesn't get any better. Oh, we just got the tape here.